Hello, this is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for June 5th, 2015. It's a Friday morning, so I love closing out the week strong, heading into the weekend strong. This message is part of a series entitled Grace Space Success, where we together have been learning how to win in life, how to do it God's way by his unearned and amazing grace. Yesterday, I shared a message with you about honor. And today, I want to continue to flow in that same vein. So the title of the message is Honor is the Culture of God's Kingdom, Part 2. Yesterday, we looked at when Jesus went home to his hometown. And we looked at it from Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. And we saw the negative reaction that he received from the people there in his hometown. So today, I want to look at that same situation, but through the lens of Luke. So Luke wrote something, Dr. Luke, in Luke chapter 4 verses 22 to 27 and that's what i want to look at today looking at the same situation through a different lens luke says everyone there said good things about jesus they were amazed to hear him speak with such wonderful words but here you go but they said well how is this possible isn't he joseph's son hold on now that's mary's boy and then jesus said unto them yeah i know you want to tell me the old saying doctor go heal yourself you want to say hey we heard about the things that you did in capernaum now we want you to do those things here in your hometown but to which jesus responded the truth is a prophet is not accepted in his hometown and then jesus gives two examples of how a prophet was not accepted jesus said during the time of elijah it did not rain in israel for three and a half years there was no food anywhere in the whole country there were many widows right there in Israel during that time. But the fact is, Elijah was not sent to any of those widows. Elijah was sent to the woman, a widow in Zarephath, in the town of Sidon. I'm going to explain that on Monday. And then he goes on to say about Elijah, he says, And there were many people with leprosy in Israel during the time of the prophet Elisha. But none of them were healed. The only one that was healed was Naaman. And he didn't come from Israel. He came from Syria. He was a Syrian. So here you have a man that was anointed to minister, uh, uh, you know, a breakthrough to a widow. There were a lot of widows there. God had to send them all the way to Zarephath. <laughs> I'm going to teach that on Monday. And then here you got Naaman uh, where you have a situation where there was a man anointed to heal leprosy. There was a lot of lepers around there. None of them got their breakthrough. A stranger had to come from another country, Syria, to get their breakthrough right there in Israel. And so what does this mean to you today? On Monday, like I said, I'm going to really explain the details of those two situations that Jesus provided, uh, the widow in Zarephath and Naaman the Syrian. But for today, I'm, j I'm just going to really highlight the major point. What Jesus was saying was that Elijah and Elisha had to find strangers who would honor them enough to tap into the anointing on their lives. So they couldn't just, the people around them that were too familiar with them couldn't tap into that. But strangers came who didn't know them at all, and the strangers were able to receive from the anointing that was on their lives. With that in mind, I have four things to share with you on this Friday morning. So understanding that, let's get into the message. Number one, honor is woven into the fabric of the kingdom of God. See, our God is a God of honor. He requires his people to be honorable, right? Because we represent him. God, God's system, the system he set up, the system he established, his kingdom operates on the basis of honor. We're supposed to honor God and honor one another. And, and the Lord wants you to receive. He wants you to receive everything he wants for you to have. But in order to receive everything he wants for you to have, you're going to have to honor his divine representatives here in the earth. For example, I am one of them, right? So, so if, if you're watching this video, I would assume that you, that you have some level of honor to be able to receive from God through me. But if you don't honor me, it would be hard for you to receive from me. Number two, God wants you to honor his ministry gifts like myself. So God has an anointed and appointed people in the body of Christ to serve as his gifts back to the body. The Bible says, Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers. Christ gave these gifts to prepare God's holy people for the work of serving to make the body of Christ stronger. God gave these gifts to the body of Christ to prepare the body of Christ and to build up the people to ed for the edification of the, of the body of Christ. And, and so there are certain things the Lord wants to give you. There are certain things the Lord wants you to know. There are certain things he wants you to have. And what he does is he anoints people in the body of Christ and gives them to you as a gift to, so that they can be the conduit through which you hear from him. 
But if you don't honor the gift or the person, then it's going to be hard for you to receive from God through that person. And, and, and if you're not careful, you'll miss out. You will miss out on things that the Lord designated for you to have or to know through that person because you didn't honor the person. So developing a culture of honor keeps you in a position to hear from God. It keeps you in a position to receive from God through his divine representatives. Number three, I've seen honor or dishonor play a major role in how a message is received. So I'll just give you this example. And, and I can give you many, but I'll just give you an example, right? I've seen this play out several times. Let's say that there's a pastor who preaches a powerful message at 11 a.m. service in his or her uh, home church. Pre preaches a message, the message was powerful, the power of God was present, and then people received, they received to a, a certain level. It was a fairly good message with, you know, a fairly uh, powerful impact. And, and so the power of God, that was it. Good message, good service. Thank you, pastor. Love you. God bless you. Have a, have a blessed Sunday. I then travel with that same pastor somewhere else. Let's say we're preaching an afternoon service, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., whatever. Go somewhere else. And I've seen the pastor preach the very same message. Same message, different place where people didn't know him or her. And then I've seen the power of God manifested with miracles, signs, and wonders. And I've asked God about that. It's happened to me too, right? And so I've asked, I, I go some places a lot of times where people don't know me at all. And when people don't know me at all and I'm preaching the word, man, it's like the supernatural just flows. Why? Because there's no filter. So when, the more familiar you are with a person, the more you know about them, especially when you know their failures or their flaws or their weaknesses, especially when you're acquainted with the things that they've done wrong. Maybe you even have some scars from that person where you don't like them or you don't like what they've done to you. Then what happens is, uh oh, it's hard for you to receive from God through that person because you have so much stuff there. And so you have to get through the filter of your feelings, the filter of your personal carnal knowledge to be able to hear from God. But when I go somewhere, someone else goes somewhere where nobody knows them, there's no filter because they, nobody knows them. So the people are just free to be able to hear from God and receive directly. And the power of God is manifested. This is why it's often hard for uh, the family members of pastors to receive from them. Sometimes it's, it's better for the family members to go serve somewhere else uh, uh, if they don't develop a culture of honor. Now, if they have they develop a culture of honor and they understand this, then they, yes, they can receive from their uncle, cousin, or father, whatever, just as long as they maintain a culture of honor. Because where there's no honor, they're not going to be able to receive. So number four and finally, you must embrace the culture of honor. Listen, this series is about you succeeding in life. You really want to succeed in life? You got to develop the culture of honor because that's the way God operates. Most people don't have an issue with honoring God. That's why they can receive from God. But if you're going to receive from God through a person, then you're going to have to develop a culture of honor in order to honor the person. Because if you don't honor the person, you're not going to be able to receive from God through that person. Godly honor is divine respect for the human in the loop. When you're receiving from God through someone else, there's a human in the loop. And if you have divine respect for the human in the loop, then you'll be able to receive from God through that person. But if you don't, then you miss out and you might miss out on something you really need. So the more honorable you become, the more you'll be able to receive from God and his designated ministry gifts. So let's close this out with the declaration of faith. Head into this Friday morning and the weekend strong, developing a culture of honor. So speak this over your life from a believing heart. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about your grace and also my requirement to live by faith. By faith, I declare that I embrace and develop in your kingdom culture of honor. You are a God of honor. And I choose to live honorably every day of my life because I am your child and I represent you. I humble myself before you and your kingdom representatives in the earth. You have given me the gift of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification of the body of Christ. I want to receive from you, and I know that for me to receive from you, I'm going to have to receive from them. I declare that I do. I honor those who labor amongst me. I honor your ministry gifts. I protect my heart from becoming too familiar 
with those that you want me to receive from. I declare that I become a man of honor. I become the person that you have called, destined, designed, and desire for me to be. I honor you and all those you have designated to make a difference in this world. I am a man of honor and I live an honorable life. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Sign up. You'll get the messages and there will be a blessing to you as you head into this day and the weekend. Just remember, you have to maintain a culture of honor if you want to receive from God and all those he has designated to speak into your life. God bless you.